Hello, in this presentation, I'll be showing you how to make a custom block and how to use variables in a Scratch program. In this program, I've got a number of sprites and I've got this Pac-Man sprite. I want to be able to control its motion. I want it to be able to move up, down, left and right simply by pressing the arrow keys. So I want the sprite to respond to those arrow keys. And I also want to be able to use the costumes. Now, I select the sprite. I make sure the sprite is um, selected. I click on it. And then I click on the costumes tab. And these are the two costumes I'll be using for this sprite. So as it's moving across the stage, I want to uh, display one costume and then the other and make it look as if the Pac-Man is opening his mouth and then closing it while at the same time moving across the screen. So I click on the code tab and to get the sprite to respond to the keyboard events I go to the events section and drag in the block when space key is pressed and I choose the up arrow and then I go to the motion section and drag in point in direction but I change the direction to zero so it's pointing up and then I drag in the move 10 steps block so that it moves 10 steps uh, in the uh, up direction and uh, I also go to looks in the looks section and I drag in the next costume block. And what I'll do is uh, I'll go to the top of this script, do a right mouse button and click on duplicate. And this time I'll choose the right arrow and the direction here will be to the right 90 degrees. And I'll duplicate again, going to the top of those four blocks and doing a right mouse button click and click, clicking on uh, duplicate. Now I'll choose left arrow. And this time I'll go back, negative 90 degrees. And finally, what I'll do is... I'll do a right mouse button, duplicate, I'll click here. So I've done right, left, up, now it's for down. And I'll point downwards. So I'll test this code. It goes up to the right, left, and down. Works very well. The only problem is there's an awful lot of repetition here. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to reduce this repetition by using a custom block. I'll click on my blocks. I'll click on make a block. And I'll type in the name of the block, move. I won't select any of these options. I'll just click on OK. And now I'm going to define the move block. And I'll simply do that by dragging these two blocks right here under the define move block. And I'll get rid of these. I'll drag them to the left. I'll just delete these. And I've got this move block here. I'll just drag this to where those two blocks once were. And the program works exactly as before, except now all the code that produces the movement is in one place and one place only. 
If there's a bug in this code, I only need to go to one place to debug, not four different places. If I have to enhance the code, again, I'll just go to one place to do that. Um, the code becomes easier to maintain, easier to enhance, easier to debug. It, uh, it becomes more readable as well. Now, what I'll do is I'll add some additional functionality now. With Pac-Man selected, I'll decrease the size to 50, and I'll change the position to negative 210 for X and positive 150 for Y. I'll click here on the maze sprite and make it visible by clicking on that left show button. I'll go back here, I'll click on Pac-Man and I'll be adding some code here. Now what I want is uh, I want to be able to move Pac-Man through this maze. But when the Pac-Man touches any part of the maze, I want Pac-Man to be relocated back to its original position. And to be able to produce that behavior, I'll have to go to control and use the if then selection block. And I'll go to sensing and use this touching mouse pointer, but I'll change it to touching the maze. Now, if the maze is touched, I want the Pac-Man under motion there, I'll find this block. I want the Pac-Man to go back to X is 210 and Y is 150. But uh, I'm also interested in including a variable here. So I'll click on variables. I'll click on make a variable button. And I'll define a variable named score for all sprites. I'll click OK. Now, whenever I touch the maze, I want to set score back to zero. So I'll be able to partially test this as the Pac-Man enters the maze, moves about nicely. But once the Pac-Man touches the maze, and I'm about to do that now, it gets relocated back to its original position. Well, to take full advantage of that score variable, I'm going to introduce a couple more sprites. So I've clicked on choose a sprite, and I'm going to choose the apple. I'll just drag the apple down here. And again, I'll go to choose a sprite and click on choose a sprite and go to bananas. I'll click on that and I'll place those bananas up here. Might make them a bit smaller, about say 70%. And then I'll go back to the Pac-Man. Now I'll go to the control section and once again, the if then selection structure. Now, if I, going to sensing, if I am touching the apple, I'll go to variables here, and I want to change, I want to change the score by plus one. But I also want that apple to disappear. Now to do that, I'll have to send the apple a message. I'll have to communicate with the apple from the Pac-Man. 
I'll go to events and I'll go to broadcast a message and the message I'll say here, I'll just click on new message, is Apple disappear. I'll click OK. And I'll just drag this out a little bit, do a right mouse button, click and duplicate, put that at the end and drag that back. And now I'll do it for the bananas. But my message this time, it'll be a new message. Bananas disappear. Now, to get that to work, I'll have to go to Apple. And when the Apple receives, so from the events section, when the Apple receives the message, Apple disappear, I'll go to looks. I want the Apple to hide. And I'll do exactly the same thing with the bananas. I want the bananas to hide, but I'll go to that control section, uh, sorry, the, uh, the events section, and that'll happen when the banana receives the message, bananas disappear. And now I'll go back to the Pac-Man. So the score is set at zero, and I move the Pac-Man by pressing those arrow keys. I negotiate my way around that maze. And now, as I go down, when I touch that apple with the Pac-Man, the apple will disappear and the score will go from zero to one. And as I go up for those bananas, when I touch those bananas, they'll disappear and my score will go from one to zero. Sorry, from one to two. And then if I touch the maze with the Pac-Man, I'm about to do it now. The Pac-Man goes back to its original position and the score is reset to zero. So this is how you write a program in Scratch, incorporating a custom block that decreases the amount of repetition in your code, makes your code modular, more readable, easier to maintain and debug, less repetition in the code, and also this is how you make use of a variable in your Scratch program.